In this video, we're going to talk about error analysis. So when we have measurements, we want to compare those measurements to what we know about the data that we have. So there are a couple of different ways to describe data. There's accuracy. When we talk about something being accurate, we're talking about how close a value is to the correct value. And the way that we determine whether or not an experimental value is accurate is we compare it to the theoretical value by taking the difference of the two, so the, the difference between the theoretical and the experimental values. We divide that difference by the theoretical value, and then we multiply the whole thing by 100. It is a percent, so the unit on percent error is percent. Don't forget to put that when you are writing that. And to find the experimental value, that's what you do in the lab. To find the theoretical value, sometimes that will be in your reference table or it will be given to you. But that's how we compare to tell how close something is to what it should be or what we expected. The other thing that we have to look at is something called precision. And that tells us how close two measured values are to each other. So if you were doing a lab and you measured two different uh, measured two different things about a substance, you would want to be able to compare those two values to determine how close they were. With percent difference, you've got the difference between the two values, value 1 minus value 2, and then they're divided by 1 half times value 1 plus value 2, so the average of the two values. So the difference between the values divided by the average of the two values. Now you'll notice in the numerators of both these equations there are absolute value signs, the vertical lines before and after the equation. And what that does is it makes the value inside the absolute value signs positive. So if value 1 is smaller than value 2, that would make a negative number on the top of the percent difference equation. But when you put the absolute values on it, it just takes the negative away. It makes it positive. Okay, uh, precision's used by a lot of different people. When people are manufacturing things, they look at, at precision and that sort of thing. And so it just tells us how to, how to determine that. So when you're doing your density lab, accuracy, that's going to be how close you actually got to the theoretical values of the substances you looked at the densities for. Precision is when you took more than one measurement, that was part two of the lab, for the same thing. So you would have taken more than one measurement for water. And you'll use that to compare those to each other. Let's look at a couple of examples where we calculate our errors. In this one, you have determined a density for aluminum of 2.54 grams per centimeter cube. And it's asked you to find the percent error. Here's our formula. So let's go ahead and calculate our percent error. So we know that our percent error is our theoretical. The value that we have, we determined in our lab, that would be our experimental value. Our theoretical value, we would look up in your reference table. So pull out your reference table, pause the video if you need to, and look at the front page to find the density for aluminum. So go ahead and complete filling in your numbers. You've got a theoretical value of 2.702 grams per centimeter cubed. And then you want to subtract your experimental, which is 2.54 grams per centimeter cubed. And then remember to include those absolute value signs. If there's a negative number there, that will take care of it. And then on the bottom, we just divide by our theoretical, which is 2.702 grams per centimeter cubed. And then we want to multiply that whole thing by 100. When you go ahead and subtract and get the difference here, it's 0.16. It's a positive number, so we don't have to worry about the absolute values. And then you'll divide by 2.702. And when you do that, you'll get 0 0.05995. And when you consider your sig figs, that will be 
0.00%. Don't forget this multiplying by 100 step. It's easy to forget. And don't forget your unit percent. Let's try another one. Let's look at the densities that we're comparing. That would be for precision, where we're comparing the two numbers that we got in the lab. So when you compare those, you want to use the percent difference, and there's your formula. So let's go ahead and set that up. So for percent difference, I'm going to go ahead and abbreviate that. We're going to, don't forget to include your absolute value. It doesn't matter which value is value 1 and which value is value 2 because that absolute value will take care of that. But let's go ahead and start with 2.54 grams per centimeter cubed. And then we're going to subtract 2.69 grams per centimeter cubed. And then we're going to close that absolute value. And we're going to divide by 1 half times 2.54 grams per centimeter cubed plus 2.69, I'm going to squeeze a little bit there, grams per centimeter cubed. Close that parenthesis. So go ahead and punch that into your calculator. Pause the video. Don't forget your multiplication step to multiply by 100. What I got was 5.74 percent.